Hi, I'm Mark Mush, and welcome back to Furious Fiction. I'm here with my co-host, Diane Roberts. We're going to talk today about one of the canons of uh, American literature, definitely Southern literature, Absalom, Absalom by William Faulkner. Absolutely. And Diane, tell me, you, you teach this book. I mean, tell, tell, me, tell me your thoughts, the, the quick thoughts on this. Well, the quick thoughts, uh, quick thoughts on Faulkner are always tough, but <laughs> I'll try. Um, I think this is, is possibly the greatest American novel of the 20th century. It's my favorite Faulkner novel. And having said that, it's a very difficult book. It's, it's yeah, I mean, I mean, kind book. of uh, all Faulkner novels that I've read are difficult, yeah. and this is, this this may be uh, at the top of the difficult list. I mean, this isn't one that you pick up and go, yeah, I kind of knock that out in a, in a weekend. Yeah, ain't a beach read. It's no. not a beach read. But, um, but I think it is. I mean, somebody had mentioned to me that you know you kind of got to read this like you'd read poetry. I mean, little bits mm -hmm. at a time, and kind of you know work your way through it, and kind of you got to go back and figure out what's yeah. going on here. I mean, I mean, did you have difficulty? figuring out when you first read this well, yes, what was going absolutely. on? Well, yes, absolutely. The first time I read it, I just thought, what? What? Because there are five different narrators. Um, four of them are uh, sometimes misrepresenting, sometimes possibly lying, and definitely not knowing what really happened. These people are trying to reconstruct a story that happened uh, during the Civil War and just before the Civil War. And they don't know all the facts, but sometimes they're just making it up. And, and did you? I got to ask you: Did your book? And I didn't notice this. So I was almost finished reading this. Does your book have a little chronology in the back of it? It and, does. And, and, and you know, so so. And I almost wished I hadn't seen that because then I'm like skipping. What exactly is happening here? Uh, but but I, you know, I mean, is that good thing, bad thing? What do you well, think? Well, I, I you know that chronology I don't take too seriously because yeah. Faulkner kind of put it in at the behest of a publisher and right. you, know, you don't need it because you don't need it, it you can read it as a detective story this is about a murder there is a murder mystery in the middle of it uh, you can read it at that level to try to figure out you know who did what when you can read it as a family secret story it's a great gothic novel because well, it, it happens in the mid middle of the civil civil yeah. war so mm -hmm. it's kind of a civil war novel mm -hmm. i mean but but yeah i mean you're right in terms of gothic novels i mean what mm. what what gets more gothic than this it's got a haunted house it's got a <laughs> curse it's got a demon the whole thing it's a, it's actually a really a great read you know it has doomed young men it has uh, you know doomed young women it has doomed a lot of people and what Faulkner said when he wrote this and one of the fun little things to think about is that it came out in 1936 same year as Gone with the Wind Faulkner said he wanted to write a Civil War novel without as he put it the plug hats and crinolines and boy he did because this is like the anti Gone with the well, Wind. Well it is and nobody's you know there, there's not a whole lot of gentry here I mean this is this is kind of a you know some you know some down and out in more ways than one mm -hmm. uh, uh, folks and family. Oh, and it, it just rips the lid off of the genteel fiction of slavery. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, this is about the unspoken truths of who's really related to who. Yeah, and kind know. of the kind of the the unhappiness of uh, you know of, of a lot of uh, a lot of that. I, let's say I'm just a guy on the street. I've always heard of this book. I've never read it. Yeah. Why would I, why would you advise me to pick this up and read it? Why should I read Absalom Absalom? Because I think it lays bare a truth about. America's dependence on slavery, not just the South, and about the kinds of fictions and lies we constructed to make that seem okay, to make it seem okay that these sorts of people over here were, we could abuse them and own them and treat them like they were less than human because we defined them in a certain way, and these people over here had privileges that the other people didn't have. I think that's one of the wonderful things the book does. The book also does a real number on the secrets families try to keep and how they come back. The right. repressed always returns. Now, I, I had, um, uh, you know, I, I kind of went into this. I had seen somewhere where this novel was rated by Southern writers as the number one Southern novel of all time. So I've kind of figured, well, you know, I've, I've never read this. I mean, I ought, <laughs> ought to at least read this and see what's going on. And so I kind of went into it as kind of the, this is kind of the cod liver oil of Southern <laughs> literature. I, I need to, you know, I need to do this because I need to do it. And I, I didn't come out of it with a, all right, well, I've survived that, you know. I mean, it, it's, it's good, but it's weird. And it's, it's and, it, and it's, it's difficult. I mean, it's the kind of thing that you go, you know, maybe I ought to go reread that and make sure I 
got what's well, going on. Well, don't, don't feel bad because every time I reread it, I am convinced somebody has stuck pages that were never in my book before <laughs> in my book. And I've read it maybe 15 times. And some of it still seems like, wait, where'd that come from? You know, when, you, when you've got a novel where two of your main narrators suddenly disappear completely into the past and drag you with them, where we're told they're not in the room anymore. You know, this is a one. It's about possession. It's about you know the ghosts the, the and uh, pain, the pain of of all of this stuff. And I mean, it's so beautifully done. It is very, very much like an epic poem that's sort of somehow been blown up and glued back mm -hmm. together again. And the sheer beauty of it. I mean, Faulkner, uh, very much a writer of high aesthetic value, let's say. But it is, I find it very, very compelling. And I think probably as a Southerner, I find it, it speaks to me, but it, it speaks to anybody who's you know, got a family, got a history, you know, got an interest. <laughs> and and in, most, yeah. most do. Indeed. Uh, I mean, so, so what do you say? N number one Southern novel? Yeah. You know, number one Faulkner novel? Both. Okay. In the top ten of American novels? Top three. Okay. Top three. Well, that's that, that's pretty uh, that's pretty strong. Uh, Definitive. Yeah, 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 right there. I, I, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I'd have to be there on most of that. Top three American novels. I don't know, but it, it's of you the twentieth century. Yeah, the twentieth um, century. I mean, it, I mean, it's it's you know, it's it's pretty you know, it's pretty darn worth reading. I have to say that. So <laughs> glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> well, well, thanks. Uh, I'm Mark Mustrin with Diane Roberts. We're here on Furious Fiction. We're talking today about William Faulkner's Absalom, Absalom. Thanks for being with us. We'll see, see you, you next time. time.